How are you? I'm doing great, but wait, what? Why, why, why are we talking here? We could be over there playing ping pong. Well, we can still play ping pong during the commercial break. You want to play against our best, McLovin? Who did I smack around last time? That was McLovin. Oh, I don't know if that was a result. Well, I'm ready to take on the number three seed because I'm number one seed. <laughs> he was two. Okay. Don't you ever let the you know the competitiveness you know rest oh, a little? Oh, for sure, for sure, but okay. not in ping pong. Ping okay. pong's too much fun. Uh, okay, is the story correct that when you're on the dream team, you beat Michael Jordan in ping pong? Yes, Dan. We've gone over I this just plenty wanna, of times. I just, I just want to, I just want to make sure that uh, I, it's a whole new audience here. You're right, a new audience. So we got to go through it again. Yes, okay. we do. And then we could talk about the shot against uh, Kentucky and, you know, <laughs> stepping on a guy's chest. We can do all of those things again. All right, so tell me. You beat Jordan in ping pong. And then his reaction when you beat him in ping pong was? And I beat David Stern. And over the years, I've heard through the rumor mill <laughs> that Jordan had, like, someone go out and buy a ping pong table yes. and take it up to his room yes. so he could practice. Now, I don't know if all that's true. I never heard that until the rumor mills, and I didn't see it. But someone said it in a book or some rumor mill maybe. But I don't know. But I know we played again, and I might have won again. Oh, because the story is he demolished you. Well, I don't know about all that. But see, that's why I asked the question, because I want to clear this up so then you never have to explain it again. Did well, Jordan ever beat you in ping pong? Not that I recall. Okay. If but, he's listening right now, what would you say to Jordan about this? Not that I recall. <laughs> Refresh my memory. <laughs> but that's the only thing I ever beat him at. Really? Did you ever play him one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I did not play everybody on the Dream Team one-on-one. -on -one, and I think Michael came out just for like one possession. And he had the ball, and I had to guard him. Um, How'd that go? It didn't go well. <laughs> but I remember, I remember in a game, in a practice situation, we were playing five on five, and I caught the ball at the, like, the top of the key, and I looked, and Michael was in front of me, and I said, "Man, he's so quick. He's gonna go for any fake." So I faked him left. And I actually got by him. And as I'm going to myself, oh, my God, I got by Michael Jordan. <laughs> as I'm saying I got by Michael Jordan, I go up for my dunk, and David Robinson's right there. And so it was all over. How did you, did you feel like, did they make you feel like you belonged on that dream team? Because you were the only college guy. They made me feel like they wanted to see if I could act and behave like a rookie. And I was a very good rookie. I was willing to get their coffee and their cigars in the morning and their, <laughs> take their dirty laundry to the washing machine. And that that's all they want to see. They, they only want to see that you know your place. Um, don't try to upstage anybody. Be a, a good rookie. And, and they'll love you. And they did. Who did you want to pick the brain of or allowed you to pick their brains? Because you're getting ready to go into the NBA. Well, that's maybe a mistake I made. I didn't pick any of oh, their brains. Did. I wanted to play one-on-one -on -one against them more than anything. Um, I'm a basketball player. I love basketball. I love to play basketball. I still love to play basketball, but I can't because I'm 50 years old and I'm old and it hurts. Um, so I didn't pick their brains about... But you didn't want to know about their approach to the game or uh, what you needed to learn going into the NBA. No, I just wanted to play one-on-one -on -one against Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and Chris Mullen and Clyde Drexler and all those guys, and that's what I did, and that was my fondest memory. Besides representing your country and winning a gold medal in the Olympics, things that you watch your whole life growing up, the thing that I love the most is that I got to play one-on-one -on -one against all those guys. Where's your gold medal? Uh, in my house, in the safe. Yeah? Do you bring it out? I never bring it out. People ask for it once in a while. They want to see it, but I don't bring it out. So if I come down for dinner? Well, you, Dan. Oh, okay, you're special. I, okay. All right. Would you let me wear it? I would let you wear it, yes. Okay. But that's because you're a legend. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're just saying that because we're on TV. <laughs> Once we go to commercial break, you go, there is no effing way you're going to get to wear that medal. ping pong table, things will change. <laughs> For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.